In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the new slideshow feature in our 4.2 release. Now you've been able to make slideshows in MagPlus for some time, but they've always been done in HTML. What we've added in 4.2 is the ability to create slideshows natively in InDesign using the plugin. So first let's take a look at the slideshows in action. I'm just using Reflector app here on my device to show you what's on my iPad. I've actually got three slideshows happening here on this page. The first one was that headline that you just saw animating in. The second one is this typical swiping slideshow that you see here. And the third one is actually this little finger animation down at the bottom that's telling you to swipe. These are all slideshows created natively in InDesign using the plugin, using some of the various features. So now let's jump out and take a look at how this looks in InDesign. The way that we create slideshows is using what's called the Object States panel. So I'm gonna open that up. It's here under Window, Interactive, and then Object States. Object States is a really cool, powerful thing because it basically lets you say for one object, I want it to have multiple states, which can be a slide or a different bit of text or a different position for an element, as you see with that finger. And the slideshow basically just gives you a way to either animate automatically or have the user move through those different states. So for instance, here we have our uh, slideshow of our swiping and you can see it's got six different states. So I'm gonna delete this and recreate it and just show you how this was actually made. So first I'm just gonna draw a box where I want my slideshow to be. I'm gonna roughly center it here and this is just an image box. And now here under the object states panel, I'm gonna click the new button. So I create a new state. Now it immediately creates two new states because you can't just have one. If you're gonna have multiple states, there has to be at least two. So I'm gonna click on my first state then I'm gonna double click on the box itself and now I'm gonna place the first slide in there. And I'm just using the place command here or command D is typically what I do to go find the image that I wanna use. And we've got some sample images out here. So I'm just gonna grab her. Now you can see once I place this, I can move this around just as I would uh, any image that I'm putting into a box. So maybe I wanna move this up a little bit, recenter it, so there's my first state. Now I'm going to click on my second state over here and just repeat the procedure. I'm going to hit Command D. I'm going to find another image that I want in here. Position this the way that I want it. And so on and so forth. I'll add one more slide here just so we have enough to really see the effect. Now you can see when I click New Slide, it actually copied the second, slide, second state. rather. So I'm going to call this State 3. Select this, double click here, and grab one more slide. Let's take, I think that one, there we go. And we'll move her down a little bit. So now I've got my three different states, and now I just need to turn this into a slideshow, and that's what I do over in the MagPlus plugin. So when I deselect the object and then select it without selecting the specific state, you can see that I get this kind of dashed line around it. That's how I know I've selected the entire multi-state object. When I do that, I can go over to my object type here, scroll down, and you'll see a new object type called Slideshow. This is just in my object panel. Now this can have all the same uh, attributes as any object in MagPlus. I can pin it, I can snap it, etc. I can give it an object ID. But I've also got some choices down here that are specific to the actual Slideshow element that I want to create. So you can see the first is transition. Now what we saw before in this example was just uh, slide. So this is what slide means basically where I can just swipe straight through it. Now you'll also notice at the bottom of the screen down here some dots that are showing, that's a good screen where you can see them, some dots that are showing me how many slides are in the slideshow and where I am, what my position is. That's the second checkbox here, slideshow indicator. So you can turn that on or off as you want. User swipeable simply means that you want the user to be able to swipe through it. <clears throat> so for a manual slideshow that you would always check, but you can also have an auto play slideshow that the user can interrupt the automatic playing and swipe it themselves. So you can have both auto play and user swipeable. And loop of course just means when it gets to the end, it's gonna start over again, whether it's user swipeable or not. So you can have all of these checked. Finally, if you select autoplay, you can set the interval, and the interval can be as small as 0.1 seconds, so it can really fly through things if you want to create an animation sort of effect. For a normal slideshow, you might want something more like two, 
I'm going to choose fade for this one just to show you what that does. And you'll see when I choose fade for the transition, the user swipeable comes off. That's because the user swipeable can only be applied with a slide transition. You can't really swipe and create a fade effect. So if I just go out to my settings, make sure I'm going to my right device here. I'm going to review out to my iPad. And we'll hit back here and hit fast review and head out to reflector and see how this looks. You can see it's building through. Here it comes through to my reviewer. And let me jump back in here. So now you see that slideshow and you see the fade transition that's happening in between there. And I can't swipe this back and forth because I've deselected that user swipeable. Now you probably noticed when we did this that this headline also auto animated in. So let me show you how we did that one. This is a really cool feature to use with text as well. So instead of this thing, now I'm going to select my headline. And I won't rebuild this, but I'll just show you how I did this. Basically, I just create a text box. And then within that text box, I create multiple states. And with each state, all I'm doing is adding words. So you can see I just built this out one word at a time through my various states. And to create this little effect of, of having this dual color here, I just change the color. So in this first state, I have use as kind of gray. When I add the second word, I turned that to white. And in this state, this is gray. And here I turn the last word white and the word I just added gray and so on and so forth. And then you can see that effect come through. And now over here in my object panel, let me select the whole object. You can see that I simply set it to autoplay with a fade transition and a one second interval. So let's go back out to this and take another look at how this works. I'm just going to jump up to my library and then reselect this so we can trigger that play again. So you can see those words are coming in. You can see that it kind of creates that nice effect with the gray fading into the white as it builds. Now I could loop this and have that slide or excuse me, that headline continue to come in. I just like it to build in once and you can do it. So you can imagine all the things you can do with this. Finally, this little animation that we had down here at the bottom, as I mentioned, this is just another simple slideshow as well. So here, I just took this entire grouped object and you can see that in the two states, all I did was move one of the objects. So if I wanted to create an extra one, I'll just show you what I did. I just grab another state here and I'm going to call this state three. You can name these anything you want, by the way. And now I'm just going to go into this object. And I've just got my, I just want to double click here so I can select my little hand. And I'm just going to move that a couple you know, steps over to create one more bit of motion to it. All right. So now I've got my whole thing. You can see here I've set this to loop. I set it the transition to none, so I don't want it to slide and I don't want it to fade. I just want it to appear in the new spot. So none is a really useful transition when you want to create an animation. And I've set the autoplay down to 0.5 seconds, so it does it moves pretty quickly. So let's go out and fast review this one, and we'll see how this looks. So as you can see, you can have multiple slideshows on any vertical that you have. In fact, you can even have slideshows that are in overlapping if you want to. Oh, not the calculator. Here we go. So now we can see our little hand down here moving across all three of those positions. All I've done again is move one element in that new state. And our other animations are continuing to play here, our other slides as well. That's basically all there is to the new slideshow feature. You can have slideshows on either layer uh, that you want to. Uh, and again, as many as you want on a vertical. So have fun with it.